Um, what about holy? I forgot. I forgot about this. I can't believe about it. The Black History Month video. My God, oh, yes. the living room was a rockin' uh, during that video in this Canadian household. Let me tell you, um, Fallout. Um, what took so long? Were you? Did anything? You know, happen afterwards. What's the what's something we don't know about the video, which was you going to an HBCU during Black History Month and just, you know, sans, which means I guess nobody's Canadian here but me without the binder full of stuff, which you explained in the video. Take us through that. Was there any point where there was, you know, regret during it? You thought maybe things are going to get out of hand. I think you left when you thought things were going to get out of hand with the police. Give us a little bit of insight on that. There's no such thing as safety or danger. There's no such thing as ethical or unethical. There is only okay, Obi Wan. There is only content. (laughs) So I walked into it. People are like, "Oh my gosh, you were so brave." I I I was unable to experience fear because my priority (laughs) is not safety. It is content. It was like (laughs) a very sort of like no seriously. It was like a very sort of tranquil state because I'm like looking death in the eye and I'm like, if you do this, (laughs) I'm I'm getting content. I'm like, I don't care. So I don't know. The point of that video wasn't to, and so like a lot of people are trying to, you know, outflank me from the right and be like, Doyle thinks he's going to have a Socratic dialogue with, you know, people who are racist against white people. That wasn't the point. The point was to show, and I explained this in the video, the point was to showcase how largely impossible that kind of dialogue is uh, between, you know, like young black students and, you know, normal young white people or whatever. Uh, A lot of well-meaning conservatives tend to think that like, there's just like, oh, they're just like, you know, being misled by the Democrat plantation, blah, blah, blah. Maybe that's true, but you don't understand how bad it is. So I was trying to shine a light on that because uh, a lot of people think that like the reason the Dem- or the blacks are voting Democrat, you know, 95 percent is because like conservatives just haven't appealed on issues like criminal justice and things like that. You know, Trump, <laughs> unfortunately, fell victim to a lot of that bad messaging uh, during his first administration. So that was the point of the video. It was to shine a light. Uh, and say, like, this is the reality of how this is. Um, and so maybe we need to accept that. And, you know, there were a lot of good stuff. There was a lot of good stuff in there in terms of the facts, because if you're going to have that conversation, it's typically going to go about one of seven ways in terms of generational wealth, slavery, Jim Crow, and redlining. You know, we hit on pretty much all of those. Um, and there was a lot of good information there. But yeah, I guess the only fallout that happened that I didn't mention was I was reached out to by a lot of very, uh, well-known conservatives who were like, dude, this is so awesome. You've got some balls, man. And I don't expect this, but I think it's interesting that they were willing to, you know, extend that sort of endorsement privately, but then publicly they wouldn't do the same, which I don't expect. Again, you know, it's like, that's kind of a controversial video. I don't expect you to put your reputation on the line, but I think it does go to show like, like we said in the video, there are very safe ways to do that where it's like, I'm going to go, you know, debate like white kids on socialism, ha ha ha. Or I'm going to go debate white kids on systemic racism. It's like, who cares what white people think about systemic racism? Oh, well that's identity politics. Yeah, it is. Like, why wouldn't you talk to black people about systemic racism? Like that's the block that is pushing that white people may buy into it, but if not for black people, white people would move on to something else. Like that's, you know, who you want to talk to. So it's very interesting to me that, you know, not only when they do have that conversation, they want to go on the campus and talk to white kids about racism or whatever. It's like, okay, I'm going to go to an HBCU, talk to black kids about systemic racism. We find out a lot about how they actually view America, its institutions, white people, et cetera, et cetera. And then people didn't really want to draw attention to that because it makes uh, the sort of messaging that, you know, that coalition, um, the messaging that that coalition tends to espouse sort of like inconvenient, I would say. So I didn't appreciate that, but I understand it, I guess. I think my advice, my hindsight advice to you is you should have worn the Michael Vick Atlanta Falcons jersey. Uh, really worked that, really worked the dog fighting angle. Um, what I did notice, though, on a more serious note, is that a lot of the, the, a lot of the justifications for many of the viewpoints expressed on that episode were, you know, a hundred years ago this happened or 60 years ago this happened civil rights movement jim crow laws why do you think there's such an inkling to go back to his historical wrongs or historical injustices amongst this group where clearly they're taught a lot about this you had a lot of these students come up in different instances separate from each other and say well what about black wall street or what about this thing that happened which most people probably don't know anything about and clearly 
uh, this school is specifically teaching these talking points. Why do you think so many of the arguments you faced were historically based? Like where if I was to come up to somebody and be like, in 1637, my French ancestors came to Canada and they were treated poorly. You know what I'm saying? Uh, quite honestly, because they have to, there's no other answer. There has to be uh, but what about this? But what about this? Because if not for that, everyone would be wondering like, wait a minute, why is your material standard of living? Why is your culture? Why are all these things not catching up? 